So it's Thursday, the 28th of October, 2021. So may we all set our hearts on this practice. And as we're all well aware, the days and the nights keep passing by, passing by. And we should really bring this into ourselves as well. Let's take our minds and contemplate this, that these things pass, and it's not just the days, the nights that pass away, but what also steadily passes by is our life. We get born as a small baby and then grow up. The days go by, the weeks, the months, eventually the years. And then just a flash, you're already two years old, and then 10 years old, and then 20 years old. And then we enter into middle age, and then into old age. And if we're over the age of 60, then we're already into old age. And people call us uncle or aunt or grandfather or uh, venerable father. And so things deteriorate in this way. And the situation of our bodies, the state of these bodies, is they're comprised of cells. And then as the body gets old, the new cells don't get uh, produced in time. And the cells which are decaying, deteriorating, or old, uh, are more. And they're not able to be replaced in time. And that's what old age is. And then as the body gets older, it grows more painful as well. So old age, sickness, and death, these are normal things for us, just like we chant. And so when we chant, we understand that, but that understanding, it's not inside our hearts, it's outside our hearts, and so we don't see that clearly. But if the understanding goes right into the heart, then we're able to perceive the pain, the stress of sankharas and of this conditioned body that has to decay in this way, has to deteriorate like this, and we're not able to control it. So the things which are beyond our control, why is it that our heart attaches to them as belonging to me, as being me? This is something that we should think about, something that we should reflect upon that we're not really able to control anything about this body. We don't want it to get old. We don't want it to go through suffering or pain. But when we are born into this world, then we seek out many, many things. We try to find all kinds of things. And then we get them. We get many things in this world. And no one wants to leave them behind. No one wants to pass away from this world. But some people, they leave very quickly. They don't even make it to old age. Just at the age of 40 or 50, some people pass away. And there are many people who do this. So for all of us who are born into this world, none of us want to depart. We want to be able to stay forever. And that's because we don't know where we're going to go when we leave. We don't know where we came from either. And so this is a Dharma puzzle that's difficult to understand. But if we practice the Dharma, if we have generosity and sila, virtue, as the foundations of our lives, and then we'll be able to live together well in a state that brings us happiness because we have kindness for one another. So we should make kindness and compassion, the foundation, having love for ourselves, not wanting to harm anyone else. And when we don't harm others, then other people won't harm us. And so we help each other, especially during times of difficulty, of ardour, when there's fires or floods, when there's uh, pandemics, and then there's a lot of people who are going through hard times, who are suffering. And so we lend a helping hand. We have kindness, we have compassion for one another. 
And as kindness and compassion, it's the quality of a true adult. And through these, we're able to stay together in this world through this quality of metta. And if we don't have metta for each other, then we end up by harming each other, and this just creates a lot of chaos, to the point where even wars can occur. And when wars come up, this can create chaos throughout the entire world. And through the harm that we do to each other, it's possible to create chaos in the economy, or even uh, create difficulties in terms of food. There may be famines that arise. Or we can look more closely to ourselves, just the societies that we live in, that if they're lacking in kindness, then there'll be a lot of um, scrambling, a lot of fighting, competing with one another, and this creates chaos and confusion. So we need to train our minds so that they are imbued with these qualities of kindness and compassion, and we have this for one another. We see that in this world, some people gain a lot. They have a lot of status and praise and pleasure. And they're able to gain these things because they have good causes and conditions. That's how they can arise. And so when people gain them, then we should be happy for them as well. Because these are things which everyone wants. We all want goodness. We all want happiness like this. And so if we're able to establish our hearts in this way, then they'll be devoid of jealousy. And even though these things that other people may gain, they don't last, but still we train our minds like this, having this quality of mudita, this sympathetic joy. And the heart with mudita is a benign heart. And so we wish for people to have good things, to have happiness. Because all of us who have been born into this world, everyone who gets born, we all experience pain. And really the suffering that we go through, it's enough already. That we all attach to these five khandhas, and that's the cause for suffering. We suffer due to old age, due to the pain that we experience sickness. We suffer due to death, due to separation. And that's enough already. There's no need to make it any more. There's no need to go and get jealous of one another. There's no need to harm each other and inflict more suffering than what we're already going through. So we should help each other out. And through this, then, our own hearts become calm. They become full of ease because they have this quality of kindness looking after them. Sometimes we're not able to help people out. So in that case, we have upeka, this quality of equanimity, and we establish that first. So when we have kindness in our hearts, and the other of these brahma-viharas like this, then it makes our practice easier. And these help our minds gain peace. And these Brahma-viharas, these divine abidings, they make it easier to gain peace. And they also make it easier for us to keep the precepts as well. Because if we have these Brahma-viharas in our hearts, then really there's no need to talk about precepts. That when the heart has uh, kindness, compassion, sympathetic joy, equanimity, then it just automatically is moral, it's virtuous. It will be truthful. It won't wish to inflict any pain. It won't wish to uh, take anyone's loved ones. It won't want to destroy its own mindfulness or wisdom in any way. So we should contemplate these bodies and see how the mind is deluded in them and takes them as belonging to us something that we should reflect upon very often. And how sankharas, these conditioned phenomena, they pass away, how they deteriorate. And when our minds are in a good state of peace, then we'll see clearly that it's just nature. And nature really is always teaching us, it's constantly instructing us. Just like trees and how they grow up. 
And as they grow, they sprout branches and roots grow down. And then there's leaves and fruits, flowers. And then eventually these things fall off. Um, The leaves fall when they get old and new leaves grow up in their place. And then when the tree reaches the end of its time, it breaks, it falls. And so trees have their lifespans as well. Just like us, we all have our lifespan. Those who make it past the age of 80 are quite few. And those who get past 90 are very few. Most of us don't reach that age. And when the body is 95, 96, 97, and then its state is, uh, it's very deteriorated already. And sometimes it's just not able to eat, not able to take any food. And so that's just the nature of the body to be this way. So nature is always teaching us like this. And so we should reflect upon it. Reflect how things really are in constant. They don't last. How they're not sure. Even children die. And sometimes children die. Sometimes it's youth, adolescence. Sometimes people in um, mid-age or sometimes in old age. So we bring this into ourselves and reflect upon it, that I too must die. Our life is not sure, but death is sure. And we see that all things change, all things are inconstant. And so is there anything which is constant? Does that exist in this world? Well, there is. The thing which is constant is inconstancy. And that's right, isn't it? All the forms, the sights, the sounds, everything in this world, it's all inconstant, it all changes, all changes in this way. And that state of change is something which is sure. And so life isn't sure, but death is sure. So there are sure things in this world. There are constant things, old age, sickness, and death. These things are constant. But forms in this body, they're not constant, they change, they don't stay. So we should reflect along these lines, using wisdom to train our minds. And sometimes through this contemplation, the mind becomes very still and peaceful and it gathers together into samadhi. So we should train in this way, do this a lot, meditate a lot. Always be reflecting, always be contemplating how things change, how they're not constant, how sankhara's conditioned phenomena are not self. When the external sense media and the internal sense bases uh, come into contact, then this just arises and ceases, arises and ceases constantly. And we're not able to find anything there within it which is me or which belongs to me. So we shouldn't be heedless in our lives, We shouldn't be heedless in the age that we are. Even though we may have a lot of gain or praise or status or pleasure, we shouldn't be heedless in that. Because all of these conditioned phenomena must change. None of them are reliable. Even though we may have a lot of them, they need to deteriorate and that's their nature. And why is that? Well, it's because... This mind has come into this body, into this condition phenomena. And so it's, then we don't really get what we want from this world. And usually people don't look for anything really that's above the body. But we should be doing that. We should be seeking out this own, our own minds. We should be seeking out our hearts, seeking out a good heart. This life of ours has breath as its energy. And so we should understand that, and that our lives depend upon breath. And even though time, certain times, certain periods, it may be very difficult for people, be very arduous, uh, but we should still be practicing. We should still be trying to cultivate mindfulness throughout the day, always training our minds. 
so that we can see and understand how conditioned phenomena are, are unsure, how they're things that change, and they're always changing. And then through seeing this, we become weary with them. And this is the path to seeing Nibbāna. So may all of you set your hearts in this way. <laughs>